Welcome to TechBrothers with Amiru. In this video, we are going to learn how to copy data securely from Azure Blob Storage to the SQL database by using private endpoints. So, now what we are going to do, we are going to create an endpoint for our storage and use in the Azure Data Factory. So, I will put the link for this article in the description so you can take from there. But uh, our goal is very simple. What we want to do, we want to create the endpoint for our blob storage. So here is my blob storage, and it's called Tech Brothers IT Storage, and uh, there are some containers. So you see my containers, uh, we have uh, input container here, and this does not have any file. I'm going to go ahead and uh, upload one file, so we will be able to read that file. So I'm going to go and uh, upload this file here, and uh, let's... Uh, view this file this has a couple of records so not a big deal so it just has employee id employee name and address of so, so three columns so uh, that's all good and what i'm going to do i'm going to cancel this out right now there if you go to the let's say if we're going to go to storage here and in this storage we go to the uh, input folder here and uh, let's see we want to see access policies anything uh, we we don't really have endpoint created for this storage so i'm going to go on this storage and try to show you actually private endpoints so, so go to networking on the right here so if you see there are no private endpoints created as of now now uh, where i was able to i was trying first i was trying to locate the endpoint on the container level and I could not see that so I was uh, if you guys see that I was trying to find a you know private endpoint here so it's not there so you have to go to the storage level and that's where you're going to go to networking and uh, that's where you will see private endpoints connections so now what we are going to do here uh, we will go to the Azure Data Factory and uh, here in uh, my Azure Data Factory you see that uh, the manage private endpoints so they are disabled or grayed out right now so they will be enabled once I create the integration runtime with managed network. So go to the new and here what we are going to do, we are going to go to the Azure and self-hosted tab. And there, now you are going to select Azure IR. So that's what we are going to create. Now here you are going to provide the name. So I'm going to go ahead and say Azure IR manager network. I can say V. VN. Okay, so you guys see right here we have virtual network configuration and I'm going to go ahead and enable it. Let's uh, take a look on the definition. Enabling managed virtual network ensure that the Azure integration runtime compute is provisioned within it and can access data securely by using private endpoints. So, so you see that uh, you had need this guy. If you don't do that, then you will not be able to use the private endpoints. So I'm all good here. Region US is fine. So let's uh, create the Azure RN here. Now, once uh, you are going to go ahead and uh, create this uh, IR is in uh, initialization mode right now. Uh, it will be created pretty quick. Uh, now, at this point, uh, we did not create any private endpoint. Uh, now, what we are going to do, we are going to go ahead and create the manage private endpoint in just a uh, uh, minute once uh, this uh, uh, managed virtual network uh, uh, IR will be initialized. So this is our IR. I'm going to wait for a couple of seconds and once it's initialized, then we are going to go ahead and create a manage a private endpoint. So you can see there uh, it's running. It's running with limited uh, availability and you can see that why? Because it needs some time for the data flows to run. So 15 minutes, not a big deal. So here you see private endpoints. Now we are going to go ahead and create the private endpoints. I'm going to go and hit new. And uh, you need to tell for which uh, uh, type of uh, so, uh, resource you want to create the uh, private endpoint. Uh, here is the uh, Azure Blob Storage, and I'm going to hit uh, uh, next. Uh, you want to give some name, Azure Blob Storage underscore, maybe secure or something, or private endpoint, uh, PVT or PNT, whatever. And uh, here, select your subscription. Now you're going to go ahead and uh, select the storage uh, account. Uh, so in the, my case, I'm going to go ahead and say Tech Brothers IT. Now, you see that uh, this is not on the container level. So this is uh, on the entire storage level. So the private endpoint is going to be on your entire uh, storage level. So it's not going to be only just for one um, uh, container level. 
Okay, so right now it's, uh, it went to the provisioning and uh, what happened is going to be in provisioning for a while and uh, what you need to do, you need to go on the uh, your portal side and here, let's go to the uh, uh, our blob storage. That's where we are right now and uh, now what we need to do, we need to go to the network and uh, once you're in network and you're going to go to the private endpoint container and here you're going to see something like this. So. So it's, uh, it, uh, the request we created from the Azure Data Factory, you can see right there, Amir dash ADF test Azure blob story dot PVT. That's the endpoint we try to create from the Azure Data Factory. And the, here is the pending. I'm gonna select that and hit approve. Okay, yes, you can, uh, whatever you wanna put right here, go ahead and I'm gonna hit yes. Now it's gonna go to the approved stage in just a second. So you see right here is approved. Now I have to go back to the Azure Data Factory. It's gonna take some time here. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. So let's refresh a few times and this should be all done. Now, meanwhile, uh, our uh, uh, this uh, IR is uh, okay. successfully enabled uh, active authoring capability for uh, IR. So it's working on it, it's refreshing and finally succeeded. Uh, and uh, the approval state you see right there is still pending. Um, I have already approved from the portal and this is approved, but it always take like a sometime minute or uh, even two minutes, uh, you know, sometime to get to that uh, level. So it's still pending. Once it's done, it's gonna say approved. Meanwhile, uh, this is uh, in process of approval. I can go ahead and create a table where uh, we will load the data from this uh, uh, storage. Yes. Remember that in the input folder we have a file. So I have to create the uh, table that I can uh, use, uh, that we can use to load the data. So to go to tech resources and here I'm going to go to the databases and here is my database. If you are interested how to use the private endpoint from the Azure Data Factory uh, with the SQL Server, I already have a video on it, uh, so you can find on the list, and uh, that's very easy. It's the same process actually, so not not a big deal. Instead of selecting Azure Blob Storage, you will be selecting Azure SQL Database. So now, go to the Query Editor, and I'm going to provide the password here, and uh, let's go ahead and provide the password. Okay, now we are all good here, and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the storage here. In the storage, I'm going to go to the containers, and inside the container, I have input folder, and that's my file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just copy these uh, columns there, because I need to create uh, the uh, table. So create table, and uh, dbo.emp, and uh, let's call this guy. In, maybe we can do is just integer for this, uh, uh, you know, int. And uh, let's do watcher 100, and then uh, we will do address so watcher 100 as well. Now this is all done, and uh, our table should be ready. And uh, what we are going to do here, we are going to do the EMP select data from this guy. Now there is no records, so if result no record is there. Now we are all good here. Let's go to the our uh, IR here that we just created uh, and. Uh, the private endpoint uh, is, let's see if it is approved. I'm gonna go ahead and select refresh button because uh, what happened once you reload sometime that's where it get, uh, you know, new status. So we see that uh, the new status is approved. We, our managed private endpoint is ready. And now what we are gonna do, we are gonna create a pipeline. I'm gonna go to the create a pipeline, new pipeline, and I'm gonna use a copy data. So in the copy data, I'm gonna read from the input folder so I need to create the linked service. So you're gonna to go to the data set here, new and blob storage. And in the blob storage, we are gonna go ahead and select the CSV file. Now we select the CSV file. Here is a linked service. So we are gonna create a new linked service. And what we are gonna do, we are gonna select our Azure uh, VN managed virtual network IR. So that's what we have selected here. So you can see right there because we want to use the private endpoint. And uh, remember that uh, that's the, the important component uh, when we created the, uh, before even creating the private endpoint, this has to be created. So now we selected that one in the authentication, fine. I'm going to select the subscription in the storage. You can select uh, the storage, tech browser IT storage. And here you see that managed private endpoint, it is approved. So we are all good, we are going to hit test and uh, now test is uh, successful. 
we can go ahead and say um, whatever the name you want to give private endpoint PVT or PNT private endpoint uh, you have given that name right there and uh, you create that uh, um, linked service uh, now the link service is created and I need to read uh, the data from uh, that uh, table so I'm gonna browse through that table input and here your file should be there so select that file and now our we don't have a uh, subdirectories and all that and uh, yes uh, our first row has a header so select that part I'm not interested to import metadata and schemas and all that so I'm fine with that hit OK and now we are gonna go to sync uh, and here we will be mapping to our Azure SQL table so Azure SQL table right here and now what we have here now you are going to select uh, Azure SQL database here or you can create a new linked service. Uh, okay, go ahead and create a link, new linked service. Uh, you see right there I am using uh, auto resolve integration runtime or I can use uh, the Azure or VPN here. So if I use that, uh, in this case uh, I do not have uh, any private endpoint for my Azure uh, SQL database uh, but still I can use the same IR here. So that should be fine. So see it's saying man manage private endpoint not uh, available okay because you don't have it so you can go ahead and create one from here the same way what you have done for Azure blob storage but in my case I'm gonna just let this play as it is and uh, here we have TB user so fine provide the password and now we test our connection now a test is complete is successfully completed and now we are good here we are gonna go ahead and create this uh, linked service uh, to our uh, Azure uh, database so and now what we have to do we have to select the table uh, and here is my table DB employee okay I don't care about that uh, import schema and uh, this is all good now you can go to map in and uh, if you want to import map in uh, and all that you can do that but in my case I'm fine because my map in is same so I'm gonna right click I'm just gonna click here and start debug now what it should do it should read the data from uh, our blob storage by using private endpoint that we have created for our blob storage and then it should load the data to our SQL table uh, that we just have created and uh, that SQL table does not or sorry that SQL database uh, does not have any private endpoint so in this case uh, you'll see the same IR can be used uh, to read the data from the uh, from the blob storage that has a private endpoint and load the data to the uh, uh, SQL database that does not have a private endpoint that's one of the scenario you can uh, see but uh, in uh, other ways if you really want to make it secure you can always create the private endpoint for your Azure database as well and load the data to that so I'm gonna wait for a second here and once the SQ is uh, successful I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the data so let me rerun this statement and uh, finally let's see if the data comes there it shouldn't take forever but uh, you never know I'm gonna close this window because uh, that, that's where our file is and uh, let's go to the Azure Data Factory again again is queued so let's wait for it finally my two uh, or three records are loaded it took almost two minutes uh, and uh, 26 uh, seconds if that's how the private endpoints are gonna work uh, for three records and load only three records in uh, uh, almost three minutes uh, I would rather not have secure points I'm just kidding for that but anyways um, uh, I am there are a lot of things involved right here so I'm not really worried about uh, uh, my case so it read total two rows uh, you know and uh, written uh, two rows and uh, now it's all good and you guys can see that uh, uh, looks like a saying uh, doesn't show like how much time it took to write the data total duration uh, it took uh, uh, 2 minutes 24 seconds and uh, you know so that's all it's okay uh, because my um, subscription and there are so many other factors could have involved in this uh, scenario and I'm also in the process of debugging I'm not running in the production where this is triggered by the trigger or something like that so let's go and take a look on the records here and uh, if you notice uh, these are uh, the two records I had in my file and uh, this looks uh, good so this is how you will uh, create uh, private endpoints uh, in uh, Azure Data Factory for your blob storage and use it and uh, thank you very much for watching please go ahead and subscribe my channel and I will see you guys uh, in next video